So this has to be one of the best backpack blowers I've had the chance to work on and test, but didn't come without some serious troubles though. So I worked on this blower about a year ago, and back then it gave me all sorts of problems, but after some time, I was able to figure it out. And I wish I could say I'm happy to see it again, but as you might have guessed, it didn't come back to say hello. Instead, it came back with a vengeance. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this very large Red Max backpack blower, and the problem is that it won't start yet again, just like the last time it was here about a year ago. So what happened since the last time it was here then? Well, it was used a couple of times after I gave it back to them, but recently they got it out to use, and that's when it ran into some serious problems. They then took it upon themselves to save some money and replace the carb, however, that didn't seem to help out. Now, I'm going to try and repair this blower, but yours might be different, so this might not work out on yours. So if things aren't working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, I do want to check on the fuel that's in the tank just to make sure that it's not the problem, but after looking at it and talking to the owner, I don't believe it's the issue. Now there is something confusing about this blower, and that is that it does have a choke lever which is stock. However, it also has a choke lever on the carb as well. This is because it's an aftermarket carb, and for some reason they all seem to have them. Now before we get too far along, I do want to show you how it's acting when you try and start it. So as you can see, it's not doing anything at all, which is really bad news. So my first thought was that it was missing spark from the ignition system, and if you don't have a spark checker, that's not an issue. All you have to do is take out the plug, connect the wire to it, and then ground the plug to the metal on the engine, and then pull on the rope a couple of times. Now doing it this way could be really difficult to tell, especially if you're not in the shade. Now even after stabilizing the footage, it's almost impossible to tell, but there was some spark. However, it doesn't look very strong. We'll try that again later on, but for right now, since we know we have spark, I'm going to try and start the engine. I'm also beginning to question if the spark plug might be an issue, so I'm going to swap in a known good plug from a different machine just for testing, of course. So as you just saw, it didn't do anything at all. Now don't worry, I tried this a couple of times even before I started filming and it didn't matter what the conditions were, it simply wouldn't respond. Now since we didn't get a good result from the first spark test, there's a good chance that the spark is too weak to be effective, so we're going to try that again, but this time we're going to use a different method. Now to make checking for spark a little bit easier to do, I'm going to remove the recoil and the cover for better access. So this is the flywheel and part of its job is actually related to the ignition system. The flywheel holds some magnets and as they pass by the ignition coil, it'll help to produce spark at the plug. Now these smaller wires are connected to the on-off switch on the control stock that's mounted to the blower tube. One end of the wire will go to the switch while the other end goes to the engine block as a ground. Just make sure the switch is in the on position when doing the spark test. So as you just saw, there was spark, however, it wasn't as strong as I was hoping for. For testing purposes, I'm going to install the spark plug I took off earlier and see if it looks any better. Now to be honest, it looked even worse than the old plug I used, so I'm going to use the old one until a new one shows up. Now even though I can feel how much the engine is fighting back, I still want to eventually do a compression test to see just how healthy the engine really is. But until then, I think this would be a great time to try and start it again, but this time I'm going to use the drill to help out. I'm also going to take off the intake pipe, that way I can put fuel into the carb just to make sure it's not a fuel issue. Well, unfortunately, that didn't seem to help out at all. Now, at this point, I don't think it's a fuel issue, so it might be the compression. Next, I'm going to install the tester into the engine, spin it over with the drill, and see what kind of reading we get. So the reading is about 135 PSI, which sounds pretty good, and is more than enough for the engine to start and run. However, I thought it would have been just a little bit higher than that, considering it's only been used several times since brand new. 
So my guess would be that for some reason the ignition coil isn't making enough spark so I'm going to replace it. Now because we don't live in a world of free money, the owner decided to go with an aftermarket part. So yes, I would have liked to have used an OEM quality part, but the difference in price means it's kind of out of the question. And besides that, we're only looking to see if a new coil will make bigger and better sparks than the original one. I would have also felt kind of bad if they had paid 7 times more for an OEM part, only to see that the spark isn't any better and the blower still wasn't starting. So I'll just transfer over the wiring harness from the original one and put it on the new one. Then I'll install it back onto the engine and test the spark again. Hopefully this time we'll see better sparks. So after placing a standard business card over the magnets on the flywheel, I then install the coil and the bolts. Just make sure that once you get the coil installed and the card removed that you check and make sure the flywheel isn't hitting the coil. Otherwise you could damage the new coil or even the flywheel when we do our testing. So we still have spark, however it doesn't look any better than before. This time I'm going to try a brand new spark plug that I ordered when I ordered the new coil. Now it did look a little bit better but it might be because of the lighting and besides that I wouldn't call it a huge improvement though. Now that we have a new ignition coil and a brand new spark plug, let's see if it's going to at least try and start this time. So I haven't been this frustrated with the project in a really long time. Basically I'm getting kind of desperate here and I'm going to try whatever I can think of to get this engine to respond in some way. So after taking off the muffler to eliminate any sort of blockage in the airflow, it still didn't try and start. Next, I want to take the carb off the engine and see if that might help out as well, but that's when I found something very interesting. After taking the carb off, I noticed that the gasket that seals the carb to the engine was installed incorrectly. So do you see the small opening at the very bottom of the gasket? Well that opening is supposed to allow the impulse signal to make it to the carb. But unfortunately the gasket was turned the wrong way and that impulse signal wasn't able to make it to the carb. Now with the impulse signal blocked by the gasket, the carb wasn't working like it was supposed to. However, I was the one supplying fuel to the carb, so during the testing the engine still should have started. That means even though the carb wasn't working at all, this backwards gasket is not, and I repeat, is not the reason why this engine wasn't starting. Now with the carb and the muffler off the engine, I did take this opportunity to look at the piston and rings to see if there was anything wrong with them. But as you might have guessed, everything looked just fine, which only leaves us with one other possibility, and that is the flywheel. What I'm going to do is take the flywheel off the engine and see if the key is sheared. Now the key is there on the crankshaft to help locate the flywheel, but its location on the flywheel also helps to time it when the spark happens. So if the key is sheared, it would mean that the timing is off as well and making it almost impossible to start the engine. Now that would make sense because we have all three major components for the engine to start and run, which is fuel, spark, and compression. So I'm having to use a puller to take the flywheel off the end of the crankshaft, but there might be another way of doing this without a puller, however you might also damage the crankshaft as well. So here's the end of the crankshaft and that metal piece there is the key. But as you can see, it's not damaged in any way. So if it's not damaged then, maybe the keyway in the flywheel is. But it too looks exactly the way it's supposed to and that means the timing was not off either. Now I'm pretty much at a loss so the only thing I could think of was to just replace the flywheel with a new aftermarket one. So here are the two flywheels next to each other and I was a bit concerned because it looked as though the keyway in the new flywheel was in a different location from the original one. But at this point I knew that I had ordered the correct part number so I really didn't have anything to lose. Now once the new flywheel was installed I wasn't just going to put all the stuff back onto the engine and then try to start it. Instead I was going to test it right then and there to see if the spark looked any better on the plug first. Well that was a little disappointing to be honest, I thought it was going to look a whole lot brighter but it wasn't. Now just for comparison, I'm going to use my inline tester to show you why it's probably a better way to test it. 
So as you can see, it's a whole lot easier to use the inline tester versus looking for sparks at the tip of a plug. Either way, there's really nothing left but to try and do another test start and see if we're going to be let down yet again. Now, that was quite the surprise. I'm not sure how a flywheel can fail, especially one that doesn't show any signs of damage. Luckily for me, that means I can finally start to put back all the pieces to this blower and then get it ready for a test run. I hate to admit this, but most times when I get a project to work on, it's usually just cleaning and servicing the carb. I very rarely have cases where I have to dive deep into the inner workings of a machine. This blower only has a handful of hours on it, and that's because it wasn't used for most of its life. Now the only thing that I could come up with was that the magnets on the original flywheel had lost some of their strength, which didn't make any sense to me either. It would take a very long time for a magnet to lose even a fraction of its strength. So I don't think that was the problem with it, and to be honest, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. And once I get this blower back up and running, I'll be glad to see it gone. Now, who knows, in about 10 years from now, I might look back at this video and realize what the problem really was with it, but for right now, I'm just happy that it's running again. I hate to admit this, but I haven't been this relieved in a really long time. Most projects take a day or three, depending upon what parts I have to order for it. This one was with me for a very long week of head scratching and problem solving. Now most times the problem will be very clear, however on this one we had to replace every major component in the ignition system. And it was only once we replaced the flywheel that it started. So I'm going to guess that was the problem, but as to what was wrong with it specifically, your guess is as good as mine. I hate to leave you on that cliffhanger, but sometimes we don't get the answers that we want. So my question is, have you ever come across something like this before? You do everything you're supposed to with it, but after hours or even days of work, you can't get it working again, and you never could find out what was wrong with it. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.